Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see currentifieds. So why currentifieds? So if you are preparing for any competitive examination, for example, UPSC, state service examinations, or railways, any examination, currentifieds plays a very important role. So to clear any competitive examination, you need to have good command on currentifieds. So for that, you have to read one national newspaper every day. But how many days before examination? For UPSC, at least one to one and a half year before examination. So that you will be having good command on current effects and you will be having enough data to write answer to substantiate your argument and to write answer in multi-dimensional manner also, this current effects will help you a lot. So in this session, we are going to see current effects of 27th October 2023. And today is Friday, so there is no need of reading Spotlight and Metro Plus. So now let us see the first important article. So as usual, we are going to see the daily edition of The Hindu and we are going to point out important articles and we are going to learn how to read those articles and I will going to give you some perspectives so that you will start thinking. So in this way, it will be also helpful to improve your thought process. And later on, we are going to see detailed analysis of those topics, right? So, shall we start? Yes, without any delay, let us see the first article. The title says, Eight former Navy officers get death penalty in Qatar. So, here we have Indian Naval officers. They are like former officers. Now, they got death penalty, that too in Qatar. So you have to see map location of Qatar where it is located. So you can get a map based question regarding Qatar. And you have to see the keyword here is death penalty. Keyword here is death penalty. And you have to read this death penalty from Indian perspective or Indian context. Okay, so this is the one thing. And here if time permits, you have to see India Qatar relations. So in which areas we have good cooperation. So all these things that you have to see from this article point of view. And the first important article. And next topic is, this is a one image. So this is about joint naval exercise. So it is about joint naval exercise and it is between India and Europe. So it is between India and Europe, this is joint naval exercise. So why this joint naval exercise between India and European Union is important? Because the significance is it is first. It is first joint naval exercise between India and European Union and that is not in Indian waters but in Gulf of Guinea. But it is in Gulf of Guinea. So you have to see why. What is the relevance of this Gulf of Guinea. And where it is located. And especially you can get even. Map based question from this area point of view. Okay clear. So this is about this thing. And next if you move on to the states page. There is nothing much important in our states page. So you can directly move on to this editorial page today. Because don't waste much time in reading the political articles. So here there is one small article. It is about Gaganyan mission. So ISRO to hold more tests for Gaganyan in coming months. So here you have to see what is this Gaganyan. And recently ISRO conducted crew escape test. And this test is very good. Okay. And we got positive result. Why? Because in this Gaganyan mission, so it is human, um, human space mission. So humans are taking to pay space. So that ensures the safety of humans is also pivotal, right? So for that, we have this crew escape module. So this escape module is working good in this Gaganyan mission. Okay, so that is the thing recently that we had. And we are going to have further test as well. And if you move on. You can leave this spotlight, you can leave this metropolis and you can see this editorial page and most of the editorials, so this is entirely political articles, it is not really important 
and this article is about Manipur issue. So even though here lot of steps taken by government like internet shutdown, imposition of AAF spa. So even though there are violence which is continuing in this Manipur, so it is one cause of concern. And this is topic about Israel and Palestine issue. So I discuss this topic number of times. And in this opinion page, there is nothing much important. And in this text and context, you have to see about this Tamil Nadu experience on caste survey. So recently Bihar government, Bihar state government came up with this caste based census and it released date on October 2nd. So because of this again we have to go back and see this car, this experience of this caste survey of Tamil Nadu as well. And next topic is why are China Bhutan boundary talks is significant. So it is very important topic from your international relations point of view and you have to see this topic and here I want to give you one homework that is you have to see the map of India where we are having boundary between India, Bhutan and, and China. So what was the issue? So as I regard this India, China, Bhutan boundary in 2017, Doklam standoff happened. So Chinese military standoff at this tri-junction point. So here to safeguard our chicken neck corridor or Siliguri corridor. So this boundary talks between China and Bhutan is very much significant to India. Right. So if you have a look over the map, then you can understand why we are talking about this topic. And in the new speech. So leave this assembly polls. It is not at all useful. And here you can see Supreme Court allows surrogacy strike down rule banning use of donor gametes. Surrogacy is nothing but we are taking the womb rent, womb for rent. And this in this surrogacy in India we have law that says that we should not go for commercial surrogacy. That means uh, giving the baby or renting the womb for money. So only the relatives they can go for surrogacy okay so this is about this and here you have to see what is the meaning of surrogacy what are the advantages of this surrogacy and what are the issues and challenges regarding this surrogacy and the law regarding the surrogacy in india so these are the some important things that you have to remember from this topic point of view and here you can see one more article that is India's green hydrogen move may worsen pollution if steps are not in place, say study. So recently one study says that if you are not taking steps correctly, so this green hydrogen may worsen pollution. So because of pollution that will still deteriorate the air quality and still that leads to global warming. So India is planning to produce green hydrogen, right? So we want to decrease fossil fuel usage. And we are searching for alternate renewable energy sources. So one such source is green hydrogen. So we are focusing on this green hydrogen. So the recently one study says that if you are not taking enough steps regarding this green hydrogen, so it will also worsen the pollution. And if proper checks and balances are not in place, so this thing which mainly said by climate risk horizon. So climate risk horizon it is environment and energy think tank okay it said that if you are not taking the steps it will worsen the pollution so here this study says that national green hydrogen mission piloted by ministry of new and renewable energy which expects to manufacture this green energy green hydrogen so it is focusing on manufacturing of 5 million tons by 2030 so if you want to go for production of 500, uh, 5 million tons of uh, energy by 2030. So we have to go for installation of renewable energy capacity of worth 125 gigawatts. Right. So this study says that if you want to establish all those things. So if you if you are not taking the necessary steps to curb the negative impact, so that will lead to increasing of work, increasing of this pollution. So this is the thing which mainly said. And if you move on in this world page, there is nothing much important. 
and even at the business page also there is nothing much important so these are the some important articles which are relevant from our examination point of view so now let us try to see the detailed analysis of this topics is that clear so first topic it is about death penalty in qatar so let us see this topic and this topic is very much relevant from our indian context so in india also we have death penalty this is the highest punishment and even supreme court said that this death penalty should be in the rarest of rarest cases it should not be given in all the cases only the rare cases in the severe cases so then only we can go for giving this death penalty so this is the thing which mainly said and please let me know in which case supreme court said that death penalty should be rarer rarer of rarest cases in the comment box don't forget about this it is very important so eight former indian navy personals who had been employed by a company in doha okay so eight former indian navy personals who had been employed by a company in doha so they were handed the death penalty by local court so by local court they got this death penalty so why in the case of espionage so if you see details it says that these eight men so they were normally captains commanders so they have been in custody of qatari authorities since august 2022 so since august 2022 onwards they were in the custody of qatari so the court in the first instance it passed a judgment against them and it said that they have to be punished to death so what is this capital punishment this death penalty is also called as capital punishment so it is a legal penalty for some crimes under ipc or other laws so under all these things yes we have this capital punishment and it's the most extreme it is the last kind of punishment and this punishment laid out for cruelest and for the most heinous crime which are committed against humanity so for that serious crimes yes this penalty will be given and according to ipc the following will be carrying the death penalty so for which crimes there will be death penalty for example if there is murder corruption murder criminal operation waging or attempting to wage war against the government of india so in all these cases yes death penalty can be awarded and if you move on you can see this image it is about exercise first joint naval exercise between india and european union it is very important so india and european union carried out first joint naval exercise so where it is not in indian waters it is in gulf of guinea okay so this will reflect growing maritime security cooperation between the two sides between two two sides we can understand how there is increasing of maritime security and if you see some details it says that the exercise took place around 3 weeks after india european union maritime security dialogue in brussels deliberated on ways to expand cooperation in the maritime sphere so in maritime sphere yes we want to increase or expand the cooperation and also said that the drills were aimed at reinforcing naval maritime security cooperation and that in support of the region so here during the exercise here indian navy's ins sumedha which participated and even other four ships they were participated and this exercise especially they focused on series of maneuvers okay maneuvers in international waters of coast of ghana and they also focused on boarding exercise flying exercise using helicopters so these are some things they did and these activities they underline the shared commitment of india and european union and indian european union they both want to support this coastal states okay coastal states in architecture so that we can ensure maritime security in this gulf of guinea okay so we are focusing on maritime security so we talking about some facts regarding this gulf of guinea it is a one of the most north eastern part of tropical atlantic ocean so which is located in the west coast of africa so here we have this gulf of guinea so it is located at 00 north and 00 east 
with the intersection of prime meridian and the gulf and the equator so there is intersection of this 0 degree latitude and 0 degree longitude so there we have this gulf of guinea it is very important and the region it is around 2.3 million square kilometers and it is having a very long coast it is about 6000 kilometers and it has a very narrow continental shelf so if we're talking about the relief structures of ocean so we have major relief structures we are having minor relief structures so major like continental shelf continental slope right and we have continental rise deep ocean so all these things are comes under this major relief features so here it is having a relatively narrow continental shelf it is also very important and because of the rivers so that pour into it the regions heavy 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 rainfall it has warm tropical waters and relatively low salinity so region in this region the water is less saline because it is it is getting influx of fresh water from rainfall so through the precipitation it is getting the lot of water fresh water so that here the rivers are flowing and rivers will be joining in the ocean so that here we can see relatively low salinity so here you have to understand one more concept like so what are the factors that are responsible for the salinity of oceans so please let me know in the comment box in geography class i taught them in detail and this one is the Volta and Niger rivers. They are the two of its primary tributaries. Okay, and now let us see the question. With reference to Gulf of Guinea, consider the following statements. So, first one is it is located off South America's eastern coast. It is located in the South America's eastern coast. It has warm tropical seas that are mostly salinity free. It has a relatively shallow continental shelf. So, which statements are correct? So, please let me know the option which is the correct option in the comment box. Don't forget about this because it is a guesswork. So, try to guess and you have to see whether your guess is correct or not. Is it right? And now, let us see the map. So, this is map of Gulf of Guinea. So, here you have to see countries so here we have sea alone guinea liberia cote d'ivoire ghana here we have tongo benin lagos and here we have nigeria cameroon gabon equatorial guinea so here we have equatorial guinea and here we have guinea so this is gulf it is nothing but gulf of guinea clear and now let us see next topic it is about money poor violence so already it is not a new topic that i know but there is article which appeared in our editorial session so we have to see that so here you have to see what is the historical background so here we have meaties and cookies so this is the issue between meaties and cookies since 2012 there has been a constant demand so demand by meaties so meat is they are asking to give st status so meat is are asking to give st status since 2012 onwards so meat came up with this meat tribe union and they filed a petition before manipur high court and they argued that this meat community was once recognized as a tribe before merger of princely states of manipur with union government in 1949 so actually here after we got independence at that time so one important problem was integration of princely states there were around more than 552 princely states are present and we have to integrate all those princely states into indian union so that time before this uh, manipur joined india so here meat is they used to have this tribal status okay so because of this they were asking again this tribal identity so petitioners they had further argued that st status that is scheduled caste status must be extended to the community in order to preserve their community to save their ancestral land tradition culture and language so for all of this yes they need st status so what is the judgment of this high court of manipur so Manipur High Court on April 19, 2023 asked 
Manipur government to submit a 10 year old recommendations to the Union Tribal Affairs Ministry for inclusion of this meaty community in the ST list within 4 weeks. So here if you want to get the ST status you have to submit at least 10 years old recommendations. So this is the thing which mainly said by this court. And High Court also referred this case to Union Tribal Ministries letter to State Government in May 2013 which had sought recommendations along with the latest socio-economic survey and ethnographic report. So this is the thing which happened. And here what happened for this petition? So there is one opposition. Opposition is nothing but cookies. So the demand for this ST status for Mete community has been opposed by other tribal group of the state that is none other than cookies cookies are opposing this these tribal groups they opine that individuals of this meeting community they are already having demographic as well as political advantage because most of the legislature they are from this meetings itself and they further argue that meeting community is more advanced Compared to that of this cookies, so why they need this? They need this ST status. So this is the thing which mainly said by this cookies. So what is this cookie meaty divide? So it's a conflict which happening between this meaties and cookies. Okay, so meaties are nothing but they are living in the valleys, and this cookies they are hilly communities. So what happened? The tensions and the conflicts escalated during 1950s itself with the rise of Naga national movement and they are demanding for this separate Naga nation. They are, they are calling for this greater Naga limb. So greater Naga limb is nothing but they are asking to join the areas where Nagas inhabited together into one, one area. So Naga insurgency was, continued, was countered by the rise of Insurgent groups and among this meaties and cookies. So 1990s here there was National Socialist Council of Nagaland that is NSC and uh, Isaac Muweya and uh, Isaac uh, Isaac Muweya that is IM. So which was one of the largest national na Naga groups pushed hard for self determination. So at that time here cookies and Zomi groups they began to militarize from that time onwards. So Cookies later launched their own movement that is for Kuki land and they demanded for a separate state within India. And although these Kukis they once were protectors of Miti people, Kuki land movement which created a rift between the communities that is Mitis and Kukis. So what is the view of the Supreme Court? Supreme Court regarded this Manipur crisis as a humanitarian problem. The Supreme Court said that it is a humanitarian problem and also expressed concerns about loss of life and property. It also expressed concerns about loss of life and property. So the Apex Court had further noted that it is a president who has the power to designate a community as a scheduled caste or scheduled tribe and not a high court. So here Supreme Court said that it is not the thing which can be done by judiciary but it can be done by president. President has the power to decide any country as scheduled caste or scheduled tribe. It is not the work of High Court or Supreme Court. And your Chief Justice of India argued that Manipur government to undertake efforts to protect this people and the interest of the people. So this is the thing which mainly said by Supreme Court. And now let us see next topic is about caste survey of Bihar. So Bihar released this data of this caste based census on October 7, 2nd and we have to see what is the experience of this Tamil Nadu. So this is very important article from your GS paper too. And now let us see this topic in detail. So Bihar's caste based survey has spurred national wide calls for a similar census and discussions about exceeding 50 percentage of reservation limit. So here whenever we are coming up with this caste based census, so you know the detail of this uh, details of or data of this Bihar based survey right. So it said that more than 36 percentage of people they are extremely backward classes and even we have STs, SCs and even OBCs. 
So if you see this data of this Bihar caste based survey, so we can see that if you are providing reservation, it will be crossing this 50 percentage of limit. So that is the thing which mainly said even Tamil Nadu in past came up with this caste based census and that led to increasing of reservation for this backward classes. Okay, that increases the ceiling limit of 50 percentage. So even the second backward class commission in Tamil Nadu recommended that there is a need of reduction reservation percentages as well. And if you move on the second BC commission, it was established in Tamil Nadu in 1982 following a government decision to increase BC reservation from 31 percentage to 50 percentage. Only the reservation for this backward had been increased from 31 to 50 percentage after this caste based census in Tamil Nadu. So this commission conducted a survey in two stages that is in 1983 and 1984 and they focused on classification of this basis itself and they said that yes state have a significant proportion of this backward classes yes we have to go for giving of reservation and that reservation will be exceeding 50 percentage of limit. So this is the thing which mainly said here that's it. And next topic it is about China Bhutan boundary talks. This article is important from your GS paper to under international relations. Yes, international relations is very important and you can get a question from this area. So you have to see this. China and Bhutan which held around 25th rounds of boundary talks. It is 25th boundary talks. So even if you are talking about standoff between India and uh, China, so we went for more than 21 rounds of talks but there is no solution. That is the same thing which is happening with even Bhutan also. So here this article says that here 25th round of boundary talks in Beijing okay, happened and they came with signing of agreement that is cooperation agreement on the responsibilities and functions of joint technical team on delimitation demarcation of Bhutan China boundary. And finally, in this 25th rounds of talks, they came up with an agreement. And this advances three step roadmap. So, this advances three step roadmap. So, this roadmap, which initiated in 2021 for border resolution and building on the positive momentum since their last talks in 2016. So since last talks of in 2016, so there was some advantages in three-step roadmap. And if you see the details, it says that Bhutan China border dispute primarily concerns the Doklam Plateau and the India China Bhutan direction, as well as the Jakarlung and Pasamlung valleys. So actually you have to see the map of where is this Jakarlung and Pasamlung valleys are located. So here Bhutan China border dispute is primarily related in this Doklam plateau. So as said this Doklam it is a tri junction. So here we can see the joining point. So this is the tension between India, Bhutan and as well as China. So in 2017 so there was standoff of China at this Doklam plateau region. Okay so the three step road map which initiated in 2021 and this map which aims to clearly delineate Bhutanese and Chinese territories involving discussions at the table and on-site visits and as well as formal demarcation. So all these things are involved in this three-step road initiate. Okay, so this is about this topic and one thing I want to say here is if you want to get the notes of this class, you can join the telegram channel. Okay, so that telegram channel is nothing but Rathod Science Academy. I think it's not coming. Okay, I will write the channel name here so that you can see that. So here in Telegram, you can search for Rathod's IES classes. So in this telegram channel you can get the notes and actually we didn't came up with analysis in yesterday. 
So yesterday's notes will be also posted in the Strathor Science classes. So if you want to get yesterday's notes and today's class notes, you can join this Telegram channel so that you can get the class there, class notes there. And we are going to start this ethics live online course soon. So try to join this course and the details will be given soon. Okay. And we are also going to come up with this uh, prelims booster course in the first week of November. So you can join that so that you can increase the scope of clearing this prelims. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please do subscribe to Rathor's IS Academy and don't forget to hit the like button and share this video to your friends. Thank you so much for watching.